And so the journey begins. A day of painting faces. Back to the black country. Back to my past. Down the hill, past the cemetery where great auntie Marion is buried. Past the road where the factories that killed my father. Past the roads that led to my primary schools. Past the industrial village where my best mate lived. Past where the old sweetie shop used to be. Past all the ghosts of my early life. Back to the past. To Cradley Heath in the present. We call it the present. We live in it. But we measure it by what's gone before. We move forwards in time but still look back. We sit on a conveyor belt surrounded by the detritus of the years that no Swarfiga, white spirit or terps will get rid of. The gradual aggregation of stories, the patina of our lives. We trundle slowly towards our future. I'm going to be painted by a bloke I've yet to know. The room is small and narrow. White brick walls, tall a tower block of old VHS tapes threatens to come crashing down on my head. Hundreds of magnetic tails clamouring for my attention. The natural light comes straight down from above, strange in its diffuse verticality. Previous commissions are stacked around. Other sitters stare at me. Half a hairy bloke, or is it a half hairy bloke? A semi hirsut singer looks at me suspiciously. I tell him to stop worrying and pop on my bowler hat for protection. That'll learn him. And so I sit, tea in hand, trying to calm down. Stop myself from fidgeting and ticking, but the excitement and the nerves are making it difficult. It's been 32 years since I last did anything like this. My life has moved on. Then I was excitable and nervous, but with the world at my feet and all my life ahead, then I was standing on the veranda of a polygonal wood cabin in a hidden side valley in an obscure, mystical part of the Andes Mountains. Anything was possible. Everything was possible. It was then I discovered I could write, that my life, my stories, my adventures were as valid as anyone's. So I travelled. I wrote, I had adventures. All so long ago. But here, right now, I look in the mirror and see the white hairs, the lines in my face, the loss of definition in my jawline, the sadness in my eyes. I'm grey and failing. Was, the painter, puts on a video for me. I let him choose. Something about old people, property developers and aliens. I vaguely remember I've seen it before. Spielberg. Never rated him. Too corny. Just turn towards me, but keep your eyes on the telly. It's difficult. I twitch. I squirm. I tick. I gradually turn down the telly. I can't hear him or it properly. And I'd rather talk. Stroke by stroke, as my face takes shape, we sketch out our lives for each other. I tell him about the last time I had a portrait in Ecuador. And about the first time, too, in Wales. She made me face the sun, and I squinted like mad, one blue eye shut at a time. Left, right, left, right, left. It was me, but not me. It was not me, but me. My face constantly moves, like my mind, it won't rest, it won't ever let up. It never stops twitching, never stops thinking. As my head and hat take shape, we speak about our families, about our childhoods, about mums and dads. I tell him about my boys, my joys, my fears, my years. Stroke by stroke, word by word, we open up to each other. There's an intimacy to portraiture. You allow your face to be scrutinised minutely. And yet, that's just the gateway. It's when you invite the artist into the mansions of your mind, into the house around your heart, that the painting comes to life that the brush strokes start to define you. We swap stories and confidences that not even my counsellors have heard. I let him wander around my head at will, opening up doors and drawers, unlocking attics and garden sheds. I point out the views from secret windows. A photo is about a moment in your life. A portrait 
is about your whole life. I constantly shift and wiggle, scratch itches, stretch my facial muscles. I'm worried about what he's doing, who he sees when he looks at me so intently. I'm trying to remain calm and steady, sanguine and still. But my webbed duck feet are paddling like mad underneath, threatening to capsize my attempts at serenity. We talk of music, poetry, art, relationships, religion and of course moustaches. I tell him to start growing his now and don't look back. We spend the afternoon looking back. But I'm relaxing now, the initial melancholy and anxiety lifting as the light subtly changes and we ride the equestrian statue to Jollity Farm. The Ponzo's finally making me smile and laugh. And looking very relaxed, a man in a bowler hat on vibes. Nice. I looked in the mirror and saw a tired, demoralised, middle-aged man in monochrome. Was looked at me and painted a moustache in colours of black, blue, green, red, white and gold. We lived two lives in that one afternoon. His and mine. Past and present. Captured in paint and print. All ready to hang up and face the future.